Hello, people of God. Blessings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is your favorite program, Sold Out for Christ. We thank God for this is the day that the Lord has made. A day of joy, a day of peace, a day of looking forward to him and backward never. A day of resting under his finished work. What a blessed day the Lord has made. We give him all the glory, honor, and adoration, thanksgiving, excellency for who he is, because he is God Almighty. Beside him, there is no other God. Hallelujah, people of God. It's good to see you once again. Pastor Lois sends her greetings to every one of you. She's always praying for you. A message for you tonight is to press forward and do not relax, for God is on the throne. Amen. This time, I want you to call your friends, call your family members, call your loved ones, as many people as you can, and let them know that the program for Sold Out for Christ is in the air. Hallelujah. We're going to be discussing wonderful word tonight. And our topic tonight says, Who to call upon in time of life storm? Who will you like to call in time of trouble? Who is the right person to call in time of depression? Who is, the life, who is the right person to call when you are passing through? Who is the right person to call in time of grief, in time of discomfort, in time of trouble, in time of sorrow? Tonight, as we look deep into the Word of God, the answer is always in the Word of God. So without wasting time, as you're busy calling your friends, family, loved ones, and neighbors to come and watch this program, I will give you a little lineup of our program, New Global Harvest Church. Hallelujah. We are from New Global Harvest Church, and our head pastor is Pastor Lois Nicholas. Every Sunday, we meet at 11 a.m. at number 10, Faulkner Street, Dorchester, and our zip code is 2... meet at our place of worship every Sunday by 11 a.m. at 6 Faulkner Street, Dorchester, Mass, zip code 021124. We would like to see you there one of these days. And your life will never remain the same. Now, let's go into business. I want you to get your Bible as usual, pen or your pencil, your writing materials, so that we will look into the Word of God that gives life. The Word of God that gives life bring deliverance, break every shin and shackles of the enemy in our life. As we look into the word of God tonight, I want you to have faith. I want you to believe because this is the word of God. This is not a word of man. As you believe and have faith, there will be a performance in your life. Amen. We'll be taking our text from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. I hope you have in your Bible. Or if you don't have your Bible now, I want you to write it down. But it's always good to have your Bible so that you will know where we are reading from. You will know if we are reading from the Word of God or we are just giving our own story. It's good to always have your Bible. Praise the Lord, people of God. Without wasting time, 
Let's go to the text today. The word of God says in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, from verse 9 to 10. Here yeah, I read. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with sorrow. 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my cause, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. That's the word of God, my brothers and sisters. We are really going to look into that little passage of the scripture tonight. The book of Chronicles is one book like a lot of people don't like reading. When they start, it starts from the historical story of Adam to Abraham. A lot of people find it very difficult to read the names to cope with the names, instead they just bypass. But when you look at it, that very chapter 4, in a very little, just two verse, this word concerning Jabez was just, they brought it in. That is so confusing in the sense that if you don't read from chapter 4, most people can't locate this word. Amen? That's why it's good to read your Bible very well. No matter what, how difficult the names are, very difficult to pronounce, take it one at a time so that you will not miss out of the word of God. Here the word of God is telling us that there was a man called Jabez. And I'm sure this man was from the tribe of Judah. As they were given the historical names right from Adam to Abraham. The word of God says this man's name was Jabez. And what was the meaning of his name? Sorrow. Because the mother bare him in sorrow. I will talk a little bit about that. Nobody knows what happens in the life of the mother. The Bible did not tell us. But once sorrow is being mentioned, we all know that that is not a good thing. Even when you're talking to your family members, your friends, your loved ones, once you ask, how are you doing? They said, oh, I'm not feeling good today. Oh, it sounds not comfortable to you. You want to ask, why are you saying you're not feeling good? Why are you feeling depressed? Why are you feeling troubled? Here, when we read it, and that word sorrow came up, you may be wondering, what did the mother go through? What happened to the mother? What kind of sorrow did she go through? But have it in your mind that anything being mentioned concerning sorrow is not of God. And it's not anything to rejoice about. We don't know what the mother was going through. We don't know if the, the husband left her. We don't know what kind of sorrow she was going through. But that was not a good report. And by the time the mother was having him, out of the pain, some version like uh, NIV version calls it pain. He said he was born in pain. But King James version said he was born in sorrow. Nobody knows what happened. Come to think of it, the mother called him 
sorrow, which is Jabez. Now I want to tell you, people of God, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, know how you name your children. Know how you name your child. You better look into the word of God very well before you pronounce any name on your child. Because whatever you call your child, that child will begin to suffer from that name or benefit from that name. The word of God says the mother called him Jabez, which was sorrow. And when we read, you can see that he wasn't comfortable with that name, which means things we are not going right with him. Things we are not moving forward with him. Things we are so bad, he was in grief, he was in sorrow, he was in pain. Everything was just upside down in his life. So are so many people in our society today, in our congregation, in our community, neighborhood, in our nation. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are going through. A lot of people are grieved. A lot of people are discomfort because of the name they are answering. People of God, let's move ahead and see what the word of God says concerning this situation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To look at it, Jabez couldn't take it any longer. The word of God says here, he decided to call upon the God of Israel. Hallelujah. That powerful God of Israel, the almighty God, Jehovah, the I am that I am, the self-existing God, Adonai, he decided to call the God of Israel. Someone may ask, why is he calling upon the God of Israel? I know he might have had a lot of good testimony consigning the God of Israel because he was from the tribe of Judah. He knows the mighty miracle, the mighty works, the mighty things the God of Israel has done for his people. So he decided to call on the God of Israel. You are out there today. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know what you're passing through. I don't know what the situation is. Who are you calling upon? Who are you reaching out to for help? Who are you calling upon in time of your problems, in time of that situation that is driving you crazy, in times of that problem that is giving you sleepless nights, in times of that problem that is always making you cry, wetting your pillows at night. I got news for you, children of God. There is a God that you can call upon. He's not a God of man. He's not a God that is man-made, but a God that is Jehovah Almighty that can see to that problem of yours tonight. Amen, people of God. I am so happy. I am so very, very happy because we have a God that can answer prayer, a God that can give solution to all problems of life, people of God. The word of God says, Jabez called upon the God of Israel, the God that parted the Red Sea, the God that rolled away River Jordan, the God that gave the, Egypt, the, the, the Israelites victory in times of trouble. The God that set them free from bondage, from slavery in the land of Egypt for 430 years. That is the God Jabez called upon. And 
not only calling upon God. He wanted to have a relationship with this God. And how did he want to have a relationship with this God? By first, recogn by first recognizing who this God is. He said he called upon the God of Israel. Amen. Who was the most powerful God in those days? There was no other God beside him. All other gods were man-made God. Praise the Lord. Let's look at verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel and saying, Oh, thou, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. He made five prayer points here as he was seeking God. Hallelujah. First of all, people of God, it's not too late for you to seek God concerning that problem. It's not too late for you to have a relationship with God consigning that situation you are today. He's still answering prayer because he says in the book of Hebrew, chapter 18, verse 8, that he is the God of yesterday in the time of Jabez. He is the God of today and he's still the God of tomorrow. So whenever you are ready to call upon him, whenever you are ready to give your life and accept his son as your Lord and personal savior, he is ready, people of God. Let's see what happened in the life of Jabez. How did he seek the God of Israel? The word of God said he called upon the God of Israel. He recognized that he is the most powerful God. Hallelujah. I know that the problem in his life, the sorrow in his life, the situation was so worst. Even though people render help to him, he wasn't good enough to him. He wasn't satisfied with the help that was rendered to him because it was man-made help. But he decided to seek God knowing that that personal contact with God, that relationship with God, when he find the blessing or favor from God is, gonna, is going to be permanent in his life. Praise the Lord. The word of God says he called upon God and prayed five prayers, points upon his life. Let's see. The prayer he prayed. Hallelujah. First of all, he says, Bless me indeed. Hallelujah. Which means he was requesting God for favor and blessings on his life. People of God, when God bless you and favor you, no man can cause you. He knows very well that when a man bless him, it's just going to be for a season. But when God blesses him, it's going to be permanent on his life, on his generation and generation to come, people of God. That was one of his prayer. God, I want you to bless me. I want you to bless me. And the blessings of God is permanent, and the blessings of God add no sorrow, people of God. Man can bless you for a season. Man can bless you for a little while. But when God blesses you, it is permanent. Praise the Lord, people of God. And what was the second prayer point? God, it said here that God should enlarge his course. Hallelujah. Maybe he was there without a wife, without anybody, even though having a wife, but things were not moving fine. 
He wanted God to enlarge his course. He wanted God to give him, for him to be well known. He wanted God to bless him with all manner of blessings so that he will be known. People will know that this is the man that God has blessed. Praise the Lord. It's not too late for you to pray such prayer. It's not too late for you to ask God to enlarge your cause, people of God. This is a man just like you and I seeking God for help in time of sorrow in his life. Because that sorrow was so much upon his life that nothing was working good. He decided to seek God, knowing that there is solution when he seek the face of the God of Israel. Amen. And the third prayer point was, let your hand be with me. Hallelujah. He said, let your hand be with me in the sense that he was asking for God's presence, God's power upon his life. Whoever the hand of God is upon, children of God, <laughs> oh, that person is full of power because the presence of God, he will always be with that person. Hallelujah. He asks God, let your hand be with me. Hallelujah. The hand of man cannot be with you forever, but the hand of God, when the hand of God is upon you, he will bless you and lead you and guide you and protect you and order your steps and order your path till he comes, people of God. What a mighty prayer. What a mighty request, people of God. And the fourth one says, keep me from evil. Hallelujah. He did ask God to keep him from evil, which is the most important thing in our life. Because while we are still in this world that is being ruled by the wicked one which we know, there is always evil around us. Trials, temptation, problems. He was praying that God should keep him from all manner of evil. Every kind of evil that I may want to come his way, that I might want to attack him, that God will keep him away from all those evils. Man cannot keep you away from evil. Your money cannot keep you away from evil. Your power cannot keep you away from evil. Your name cannot keep you away from evil. It is only God that can keep us away from all manner of evil. That's why Jesus Christ was teaching his disciples how to pray. In the book of, in the book of uh, uh, Matthew 6, Jesus Christ was teaching them how to pray. That whenever they are praying in the last prayer, he told them, pray that God will keep you away from all manner of evil. Praise the Lord, people of God. Jabez knew what to ask God because of his situation. For a man to pray like this, it means a lot was going on in his life that was not comfortable for him. A lot was going on in his life, that people were looking at him as an outcast. I'm sure that people even call him, uh, 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 call his name sorrow, because from the look of things, they said the meaning of Jabez is sorrow. So I'm sure people associated him with sorrow. His condition associated him with sorrow. For him to pray such a prayer, our God is a good God. When God wants to deliver you, he will make a way for you where there is no way. I know a lot of you out there, God has been showing you ways for you to come to him. 
He has been knocking on that door of your heart for you to come, for you to 